Welcome to the Shipping Podcast, where I meet interesting maritime professionals sharing their passion for the shipping industry and their everyday job. I am your host. My name is Lena Gothberg. Hello, Shipping Podcast listeners, and welcome to episode 217. Again, It's a solo episode since I haven't had the time to record any interviews for you. But I also have some things on my chest that I want to share with you. You might have heard both me and some of my guests using the expression both the shipping industry and the maritime industry. I should talk about the difference between the shipping and the maritime industry, at least how I see it. Once upon a time, a long time ago, at least 10 years ago, when I was part of a group that was trying to come up with a national maritime strategy for Sweden, yes, to hand over to the politicians, we gathered all the people involved in the Swedish maritime cluster to discuss precisely that issue. What is shipping and what is maritime? We were about 50 people, and it took us more than four hours to agree on the difference and when to use which expression. So this is hard stuff. We agreed that shipping is the ship owner, the ship and the cargo, and the rest is the maritime industry. But I might be wrong. Hmm. What do you think? What is the difference between the shipping industry and the maritime industry? Is it only a language issue for us who hasn't got English as a mother tongue? Or is there a difference? Please let me know. You can email me at hello at shippingpodcast.com or send me a voice message from your phone and I can edit in you in my next solo episode. I would be very grateful if you did so. Last Tuesday, I was invited to the European Parliament in Brussels to participate in a panel on empowering women in the maritime industry and the role of the European Union, organized by Ms. Vera Tax. She organized this panel event to raise awareness amongst the maritime community and the policymakers about the importance of women and how to improve working conditions in this sector. Fingers crossed, I might be able to release parts of that panel discussion later on. I have asked for the audio files. We'll see. I hope you can listen to the entire discussion. Anyhow, the moderator of the panel was Ms. Marjolin van Noort, she is representing the Dutch ship owners community in Brussels. As a professional moderator, she prepared some questions for the panelists on beforehand. And I want to share my thoughts with you, since I gave it some time to think about her questions. So what you will hear now is Marjolin's questions and what I thought I should reply them. So first she introduced us as setting the scene and uh, she asked us why do you find this topic so relevant? Well I have been working in this industry for 25 plus years. A lot has happened but we still have some way to go and I think that is why it's so important to discuss how to empower women in the maritime industry. Then Marjolin asked, what are the biggest not used opportunities? Hmm, I think it's the untapped power of the men who share our vision, who want the exact change that we do, the ones who we can trust. And then Marjolin continued to say, what will change with the more diverse workforce? My answer to that is everything will change. 
we will be considered an attractive industry, eager to tackle our challenges. Also, if you listen to the episode with the young students, one of them told me that having a mixed group working together meant that the safety culture improved. It was okay to look out for each other and tell your mates that you were scared or uncertain about something. I think that goes to show that we need a diverse workforce. Marjolin asked, do we see a change already happening? Yes, I see a lot of young women with the tech expertise just storming into our industry with their knowledge of digital tools, such as blockchain and 3D printing and things like that. They are experts in a field where no one else has been an expert before in the maritime space. And I think it's great. Marjolin's question, where could be the current bottlenecks? Well, if I may be so bold to say, the current leaders are stuck in tradition and old habits. Everything is changing, and if you cannot see that as the top dog, then you are standing to lose. Marjolin asked, what is the potential? Well, I would say that the sky is the limit. It has been proved so many times that a diverse board and or a management team has an impact on the bottom line. These companies become more innovative, profitable and likely to retain and attract talented employees. And that is what we need. Marjolin asked, the good moderator said, what do we have in terms of legislation and regulation on the European and on international level that we can work with? Well, there were so many smart people in that room that could reply and answer that question so much better than I can. But I think we should adopt the ESG, which means using environmental, social and governance factors to evaluate companies on how advanced they are with sustainability. Then it will all show. And, I mean, why not follow the money? The banks are using this tool. Where is room to improve was the next question. I think that we need figures to prove our worth. That is the only language that everyone understands. How much do we contribute to the society? How many people work in our lines of business? When asking analysts, people who help us come up with different scenarios in other parts of our industry, is it possible to know how many people that work in our industry onshore and offshore, and how many of them are women. The reply is, it's easier with seagoing personnel since they are registered and and can easily be turned into a pie chart. But no one knows how many people is working in the maritime industry worldwide because there is no measurement, no sort of rules on how to report this so no one really knows that might be part of our problem Marjolin asked could the European Commission share the ambition and what is needed from the maritime sector I think that the maritime industry needs help with branding I've been nagging about this for eight years now on this podcast we are a hidden industry that no one knows about until something is wrong. Who wants to work in an industry that is only exciting when something is wrong? I don't know. I know that there have been some good initiatives taken by non-governmental bodies and individual companies. Still, we need a coherent strategy for the entire industry 
to show all the opportunities of exciting stuff that we have going on. And it can be carried by all the passionate people within the industry. We all want the word spread about the coolest industry on earth and on water. So what can we do today, Marjolaine asked. Well, I think it's the little things. We need to start there. The things that it's, we can change easily. Use different photos than you usually do in your annual reports or in your presentations. Use images of female seafarers. I have been promoting some wonderful photos taken by a female photographer in my newsletter for almost a year now. I will enclose a link to her portfolio in this episode's show notes, so you can have a look if you have missed it. Use the videos produced by the IMO. They are excellent marketing material if you don't have any of your own. And listen to the young people. Start to hang out while they hang out and talk about your job. They are so eager to listen to you, but the trick is to listen to them. Then we discussed facilities on board, and uh, I have never been sailing, so I really don't have any input on this. Still, having listened to so many panels and discussions... I have learned that you should always have more than one female on board so that they can have each other's backs. What is the role of digitalization? Digitalization will lead to transparency. That I realized a long time ago. No more keeping the cards close to your chest and be in charge. Collaboration is now the name of the game. When Marjolin asked, how do we enhance the dialogue? I'm rather fed up with all the talk and discussions. Can we please have some action? I think people will just follow the first ones who take action on this. What do we need to talk about? She asked. Well, we need to talk about all the bad stuff in our industry. If we don't, we will never be an attractive industry to the next generation. Then we continue to talk about maritime careers. How do you think about that? Well, I think that young people need a clear career path when they enter the industry. You can see a career path on board and how you climb the rank. But do you see work on shore? when you decide to to go that road. Once young people want to start a family, do they then feel that they need to leave the industry to be able to do that? What about the ones beginning in a land-based job? Can they see different jobs that they can go for when they start? We have some homework to do, I think. Especially since we also need to recruit people with other knowledge than before. We need to show them what challenges there are and what job they can do. Marjolaine asked us to share our best practices about diversity and inclusion. Well, unfortunately, I see a lot of pinkwashing I was upset last May when the International Day for Women in the Maritime Industry was celebrated. On May 18th, women in maritime were the best things in sliced bread. But I don't see the structural changes needed to become a truly diverse and inclusive industry. That was one day. I think we are there 365 days, year after year after year. However, I think this podcast actually is a good practice. It took me five years to reach equilibrium. Equally many women as men as guests on this podcast. I didn't even believe in that goal myself when I put it up. But if you don't even try to be the change that you want, 
how can you expect to see things change? And now I'm very proud to be able to be a platform for also female voices in the maritime industry. Marjolin asked, how can we share best practices? Well, I'm sharing with you, aren't I? (laughs) Joke aside, that depends on the target audience. Who do you want to know about our best practice? For the next generation, social media is probably the best. Is it politicians we want to know or banks? A report is probably the best way. (laughs) You see, we need to decide what message we want to send and to whom before deciding what channels to share. So then we had the closing remarks and Marjolin asked, what will you do tomorrow? Well, tomorrow has already passed, but I think I want to find more people who share my values and discuss how we can reach our vision. This is one way to do that, to invite people to my podcast. Who do you want to discuss this with further, was Marjolin's last question. I want to have conversations with our industry leaders who have the power to change. As you will hear, once the audio files become available, I didn't say all this whilst on the panel. But it was what I had prepared to say. I hope I have given you some fruit for thought. Bring the conversation to your colleagues and continue to discuss this topic. If you want to discuss it on the Shipping Podcast, please drop me a line at hello at shippingpodcast.com and we'll take it from there. That's all for now. Until the next time, from me to you, over and out. Thank you for listening to the Shipping Podcast. Don't forget to tell everyone that you meet that there is a shipping podcast available and that they should download it and listen to the maritime professionals who are sharing their passion for the shipping industry.